your Arizona Wildcats are on the air. Joining us from the Timothy Gasson broadcast booth, here is your Wildcat media team. Test, test, test. Hello, my name is Sebastian Janik, and welcome back to another evening with the Wildcats taking on GCU here at the Tucson Arena. It's Military Appreciation Night here on a Saturday evening, and even though the Wildcats did take the win technically yesterday in the win in the shootout 2-1, to one, Coach Chad Berman was not happy with the way that game played out. There was a long meeting after that game, and Coach Chad Berman's message to the team was essentially, enough is enough. That killer instinct has to be there. The Wildcats went up early on a goal from Marquis, but GCU was able to hang around and in the final minute of the third period on the power play was able to tie the game, push it into overtime, which led, led to a shootout. Coach Tad Berman knows that there is more compete level in this team and they really need to show it tonight to prove to him this team has what it takes of getting to nationals and having the success they've had in the past. A big lineup change tonight on the front end and the forward side is Dawson Marshall is going to to get a start on the first line playing with Selman and Lowell. Dawson Marshall wants to be rewarded for his hard effort and Coach Chad Berman's doing that tonight. Throughout every game consistently, Dawson Marshall has brought his competitiveness that is taking on the legacy of his brother Bailey Marshall. Both Marshall brothers were always fearsome competitors. With Bailey leaving last season, Marshall is continuing that legacy for the Marshall family and we'll see what he can get done here on the first line. And in net, Rhett Kimmel got his first start in the ACHA. He had played a great game, was able to get the win in the shootout, but it's going to be Anthony Churro in the net this evening. We're going to see what the Wildcats can do with a little bit of a roster change. Coach Chad Berman said that we're going to pull lines out of a hat. I don't think he quite did that, you know, looking at today's lineups, but he's definitely looking to shake up the lines, get some players going who haven't had their game yet. And it's going to be a real test for the Wildcats tonight because as we move further into this season, every single point is going to be so important, not only for the conference standings, but also for the ACHA national standings. We'll be right back in a couple minutes with Puck Drop. At left defense, number 12, Ty Schaefer. At right defense, number seven, Dylan Dent. And in the nets tonight for Grand Canyon is number 36, Scott Kasabowski. The head coach of Grand Canyon is Daniel Roy.
and welcome into the Tucson Arena. This is Sebastian Janik. I'll be doing your play-by-play -play and commentary for the night with Tom Callahan still out. And let's bring on the Wildcats. This is a big game for this team. Yesterday, a very similar situation two weeks in a row. A Friday night game, a Friday afternoon last week. The Wildcats play a great 58 minutes of hockey. They take a one goal lead into the third period. They're unable to get that insurance marker. And unfortunately, GCU was able to get on the power play, score in the final minute, push it to a shootout, which the Cats won, which was great for a moral victory. But Coach Tad Berman's not happy with moral victories. He wants regulation victories from this team that has the talent and the skill to beat this GCU team if they play up to their expectations. A big lineup change to get some things moved around is drawing Dawson Marshall into this top line. And here's go with the starting lines for the Wildcats. The Arizona Wildcats. Starting at left wing, number 10, Dawson Marshall. At right wing, number 18, Jesse Lowell. At the center position for your Cats, number 20, Brody Selman. At left defense, number 17, Ben Jones. At right defense, number 13, Matthew Hall. And in the nets tonight for your Wildcats, number 33, Anthony Churro. The head coach of your Wildcats and honorary commander of the 42nd ECS Squadron at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Chad Berman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and please welcome onto the ice Staff Sergeant Evan Garnish from the 42nd Electronic Combat Squadron at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, who will be singing tonight's national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, sorry, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spell Ladies and gentlemen, Staff Sergeant Evan Garnish. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the ice the commander of the 42nd Electronic Combat Squadron at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Lieutenant Colonel William Echo Gray. He will drop the honorary first puck tonight. Thank you very much, Commander, Lieutenant Colonel William Echo Gray. Good evening, everyone, joining us for this another night of Wildcat hockey. Tom Callahan, unfortunately, not able to make it into the booth this weekend. He's not feeling too great, but I'm Sebastian Danik, and I'll be here with you for 
Another night of Wildcat hockey against the GCU Antelopes. And this Wildcat team is gonna come out with a different looking first line with Dawson Marshall drawing in on the left wing. He's a fearsome competitor. He's been great in puck battles. He's really been able to drive play with his tenacity. But we'll see if he can complement Jesse Lowell and Brody Selman. Selman's been an incredibly skilled forward so far. Lowell's a big physical body with a lot of scoring potential. And we'll see how Marshall complements that. On the back end for starting defensive pairings for the Wildcats, it's going to be Matthew Hole lining up with Ben Jones. So we'll get ready for puck drop here in a minute. And let's get ready to play hockey. And starting in net for GCU, we are going to have Kasabowski again, who I mispronounced his name a lot yesterday, but he had a great game after letting in a soft one on Marquee early. There's going to be a need for intensity here from the Wildcats, and they're going to get right in on the forecheck with Dawson Marshall. Back to the point, shot from Jones, and there's a quick high one on Ben Jones on Kasabowski. Definitely do not want to turn down any ability to take a shot from the point, get a puck on net. I think the Wildcats were lacking a little bit of that last night. They weren't able to generate those second, third, fourth opportunities off rebounds, and those are only going to come with shots, so we'll see what the Wildcats, you know, first shot mentality will look like tonight. Brody Selman in to take the face off in the offensive zone. All righty, and Selman wins it cleanly back to Jones. Jones from the point, another shot, rebound out in front. Selman with the, almost is able to pick up that rebound, but that's three shots within the first 18 seconds here. That is the type of start head coach Chad Berman has been preaching. He kept his team in the arena for a little bit last night, had a chat in the locker room and told his team, you guys, this is enough is enough. You get up that one goal early in the first period, you score early, and you gotta keep on scoring. You cannot let a one team hang around with one goal the whole game. Here's a shot from Matthew Hole, Selman behind the net, takes a, takes a check from Nylon, back to the point, Matthew Hole tries to go deep down to Selman, Selman Looking for someone out in front, decides to go back to the point. Jones with another shot in, rebound out in front is loose! And Selman just can't get to it. He was tied up by a GCU defenseman, was not able to get on that puck. GCU is going to break this puck back out over the line. Nylon's going to go in on the four check for GCU, try to get one back out in front, can't get there. GCU shot from Dent from the point, not able to get a good stick on it. Wildcats looking to break the pressure out, back to Dent on the point. Shot doesn't get through. Hits a GCU player on the way. Donovan trying to crash that net, trying to get some traffic in there. And you can see right away, shots from the point might be a focus for both of these teams tonight. A lot of shots were getting blocked yesterday by GCU. They were doing a good job of clogging up shooting lanes, getting their sticks and passing lanes, and making things hard for the Wildcats to get offensive going. But you gotta be able to fight through that. We'll have Billings here for GCU against Litwin for the Wildcats in the Wildcat zone. So there's gonna be Billings playing on a line with Cummings, and we'll see who the right ringer is there. Litwin not able to win that face off, back to the point, over to Joe Klang for GCU, shot through Churro, confident blocker out in the corner, Orfanos gets some support there from Fisher, still in the Wildcat zone. Billings pulls the puck out of the pile, Billings for GCU in the corner, tries to go across, Klang looks to get one deep, can't get there, Wildcats look to transition, over the line, Malafronte on the right wing, trying to get in. Toe picks there, not able to get in, and this is gonna be icing coming back into the U of A zone. So shots there, GCU not able to generate the clean scoring opportunities that the Wildcats did, but both teams looking to put pucks on net. Challenge the goalie, Churro, such a absolute wall back there for the Wildcats. I think the forwards here, Yesterday, Rhett Kimmel making his first start was absolutely incredible for the Wildcats, but you gotta think with a guy like Churro behind you, you've maybe got a little bit more confidence in a guy who's battle-tested. Looks like a stick came up there on Fisher, no call. Shot in there on Churro from number 88 Moore for GCU. Churro gloves that, gets the stoppage, and we'll have another face-off. GCU will change up lines. So it looks like Moore is gonna be playing with Billings and Cummings for GCU. And we'll have Rudick in for GCU here to take the face off in the Wildcat zone. The camouflage jerseys make it a little bit tougher to see the Wildcats numbers. They don't have the numbers on the sleeves. When they're not facing me up here, it's real hard to tell, but a good win there from Duke Litwin, number 26 for the Wildcats. 
but not able to get control of the puck. GCU with it behind the net. Fisher flushes his man out. Clang on the point. Looks for a lane. Can't get there. Looks to get one behind the net. Shively now trying to break it out. Getting pestered there with the stick. Clang able to keep it in. But a good read there from Shively to you know make sure that puck doesn't get down deep again. This will one will get in on Kasabowski. Orfanos in the area. And he'll just cover that. And we'll get a face off in the GCU offensive zone. I think the Wildcats here want to try to get a bit of a rhythm going. They don't want these constant whistles. They want to get, you know, that rhythm going. And right here, we're going to see a new look third line as well with Johansson in the middle, Will Josephson playing right wing, and Anthony Cusinelli on the left wing. And we've got Timor on the back with Hedgecoke. So Johansson getting a chance. Timor now with the puck. Shoots. Kasabowski doesn't get anything on it, goes wide. But he was a little bit late reacting to that one. I don't think he got a good look on it. Churro with the signal, icing. Timor wins the puck battle. So, good couple, good 48 seconds there for the Wildcats in the first minute. But since then, had a little bit more trouble generating those same types of shots. But Johansson's been good in the faceoff dot so far for the Wildcats. And we're going to see Kusinelli and Josephson get on their opposite wings to have those one timers available. We'll see if there's a set play here, maybe off the face-off. Johansson wins it back. Timor, quick shot on net. Just goes wide. And Kasabowski's reacting a little bit late to some of these shots from the point. If they can get traffic and rely on their defensemen like Timor, like Matthew Hole, like Ben Jones, Shively, Fisher, whatever, all up and down the lineup, they've got defensemen with some great shots from the point. And if they can get traffic and you know make sure Kasabowski isn't seeing pucks, all of those are going to be dangerous chances. Another offensive zone faceoff, one by GCU. Schaefer for GCU, tries to get it out. Larson, number 91, trying to get it on the four check. Cameron Timor for the Wildcats. This is gonna be Josephson carrying it over the right wing boards, tries to go to the middle, Timor out in front, and it's just, Johansson can't get it. Josephson gets another chance at it. A couple great chances there with Timor jumping up in the middle in the rush. GCU now trying to take the puck down the boards, trying to get it out. Tomlin dumps it in, takes a check for his effort. Churro comes out, plays that. Oh, you know, Churro's always known as that seventh defenseman, plays the puck really well. Now Max Meyer with a burst of speed down the left wing boards, goes for the toe drag, can't get it. Just couldn't keep control of that puck with two GCU players on him, but a good job there to get it in the zone. Let's see if the Wildcats can keep the pressure on. Got a bit of a tussle behind the play, but... That's going to be Fritz, who's drawing in the lineup for the Wildcats, number 24. So he's going to get right into the action, start feeling what it's like to be back into a game. Now GCU takes it out. Samuel Hernandez tries to dump it in, can't connect on the pass. Wildcats in their own zone. Back to Matthew Hole, head up, gets it over to Fritz. Fritz dumps it in on Kasabowski. Kasabowski didn't have a good play, didn't have a good handle on that. Now Matthew Hole at the point, fake shot. Now Rister. Oh, they had some room there on that far post. Now, Dent trying to defend. Dent's able to get some support from his forward. They look to break it out here. GCU over the line with speed. Tries to feed it through for the slot pass. Can't connect there. Another shot hits off of a GCU player. Wildcats go the other way now. Marshall's going to take a little hit there along the boards for his effort, but no worse for wear. Dawson Marshall... Rebels in that physicality and is going to be happy to take a number and see where the rest of this game goes for him physically. GCU dumps it in. Wildcats are able to get to it first. Nylon on the four check. GCU back to Nylon. Nylon with some space. Oh, good save there by Churro. Dangerous rebound out in front, but the GCU player can't get there. Good job there from the Arizona defense to clear out the front of the net. Now it's Marshall trying to go down the right wing board. Selman in for support. Back to the point, Fisher takes a shot, doesn't get through the sticks in front. Marshall digging away at it. Can't get his stick out of Nylon's body there. And Arizona trying to keep some consistent pressure on. This one will bounce out of the zone. And the Wildcats will regroup as GCU goes for a line change. Wildcats will get some fresh skaters on. Selman's going to go in on the one-man four check against Dent to make sure they can get that. Orfanos in for support. Malafronte now. Pressuring the puck, pressuring. Cummings takes a hit near the GCU bench. And the Wildcats are forced to dump this one out for pressure, and that'll be an icing on the Wildcats, and this will come back down to their own zone. 
And I'm seeing some good some good legs here from GCU starting out. You know, they've got players like 91, Preston Larson, who's got a lot of speed and a lot of talent. Number 88, Moore. Number 89, Tomlin. Number 10, Billings. 33, Cummings. These guys have really been their six or seven players they've relied on to generate basically everything in these last two games. And we'll see what the Wildcats can do. 14.35 left in the first period. Score still nothing, nothing. Hedgecoke getting pressured by Cummings. Wildcats try to get out in front, but Billings is there first for GCU. Timor looking for an outlet, pulls it up the boards, able to get it out. It's going to be Litwin on the four check, pressures his man. GCU can't get it out. Litwin in the middle, goes for a shot. Kasabowski fights that off with the right pad. You know, he's been quick, but he, he sometimes looks like he's about to lose his balance at all times. But whatever works for you, Kasabowski, he's been been able to keep the Wildcats off the board. Now this is Orfanos here, in on the four check, loose puck, not able to pick that one up. Billings tries to dump it down the boards. Good hit there from Johansson on Billings. Billings is a little bit of an ordinary player. He likes to get chippy, and Johansson's gonna you know, let him know that Wildcats are more than willing to play that game too. And Jesse Lowell is gonna be a player who I would watch out for tonight, number 18. If Coach Chad Berman's looking for one player to really step up and lead that physical presence, be that leader, Jesse Lowell can be that guy. Now Moore in on the four check, in and against Jones. Jones strips him of the puck. Josephson tries to get it middle. Cusinelli on his horse, tries to get in there. Good effort there by Cusinelli to almost pick up that puck, but just unable to do so. Dumped back into the Wildcat zone. Jake McNeil. Throwing a little bit of a bear hug around the Wildcat player as he got in there, but we'll see how the refs call it tonight. He's gonna head down, Clang, able to get to it. It's around the boards. His defensive partner goes back to him. Now Clang for GCU. He tries to go for the outlet pass just in front of the forward there. Not able to connect with Nylon. Nylon, Nylon, not quite lent. Now this is Clang here with some pressure. Wildcats get in on the four check. McNeil goes, takes a big hit to make that play out of the zone. That's what you want to do. If they're going to try to get, th get this out like that, you know, punish them for doing that. Wildcats skating down into the zone, tries to go out in front, not able to do so. I was just getting a clarification there from Tanner Harris. Noah Vance was wearing four in last night's game. He's wearing two tonight. Wanted to make sure there wasn't a stray wildcat on the ice that no one knew why he was there. But number two is going to be Noah Vance. GCU will dump this in. Timor with Larson right behind him. Able to get it out. GCU keeps it in, though, at the line. Now it's Vance battling. Larson, drop pass. Tomlin tries to go for a one-touch. Not able to get it. Hernandez is going to have to skate back quick with Selman on him, but he gets there. It's going to be Tomlin dumping it back in. Churro stops it behind the net. Pressure coming, but keeps his composure. This one goes straight to the GCU, though, but the Wildcats with some support able to push this one out. And GCU will dump it right back in. Ooh, big hit there, but... You know, the four check, you know, Colby Donovan, number 17, he's been a, he's been a pretty good competitor for this GCU team so far. One of the guys who's brought energy for them, and now we've got Larson, GCU's top scorer. GCU will dump it back in. Mezik in on the four check. Hole gets to that first. Lowell with a burst of speed. Wildcats trying to get the rush going. Down the wing, Litwin oh, gets the puck stripped, not able to get it, but it comes right back to Matthew Hole at the point. Quick shot over Kasabowski, over the net. Lowell with the puck, looking for a lane. Lowell takes it to the middle. Tries to get it through, and there was a lot of room on that far post. Just not able to get the angle or find a player on the back door. But some good cycle there from Jesse Lowell. A lot of confidence to skate that puck into the middle, look for that back door play. Orfanos gets in a lane, brings it over the line. Orfanos now, back to Litwin. Litwin's shot gets blocked. Not Never got through to Kasabowski. Some good chemistry looking there. You know, Orfanos is going to be playing with Litwin and Malafronte on that second line, and they had some good chemistry there, some good confidence. 10-18 left in the first period, still scoreless. Wildcats generating some good offensive opportunities. GCU 
definitely on the wrong end of quality scoring chances, but this is still a game that's all tied up. And we saw yesterday, last night, a one goal lead is far from safe. You can play 59 minutes of great hockey, but that final minute can really come back to bite you if you're not able to keep the pressure on. And Kazaboski really has to feel confident being able to keep his team in that game. Now the Wildcats over the line. Tries to get it through, Josephson just can't get a stick on it. And GCU is gonna go for the home run outlet here. And that's gonna be more for GCU, not able to beat out the icing. And this will come back into the GCU end. So we'll have the third line here for the Wildcats out with Johansson, Josephson, and Cusinelli. Shively and Fisher on the back end. Fisher on his one-timer side. Shively and Fisher are both on their one-timer sides right now. Johansson in for the face-off against Billings. Johansson with some support. They're able to get the puck, crash around. Scramble comes out in GCU's favor. Clang for GCU over the line. Tries to drop it back to Moore. Can't make it. Oh, Clang with an absolutely massive hit into Fisher, and he is slow to get up, and that's going to be a penalty. Clang goes. I didn't, you know, I'm not on the ice with those guys, but Fisher got face planted there into the boards. He's still good. Skating on his own, skating fine. But the Wildcats, you know, if you see a player like that, you know, Fisher, who's been so good on the back end, especially on the two-way side of things, he takes a big hit there from Clang. You want to make GCU pay for throwing those types of hits. You want to make them know that if they put you on the power play, which the Wildcats were 0 for 3 last night, that they're, if they continue to do that throughout the game, Arizona is capable of taking the opportunity. So we'll see Timor down here on the right wing boards with Lowell to take the face off. Lowell can't win it. Gets right through the glove of Matthew Hole. This will head down and the Wildcats will reset. Two minutes for boarding. Time for that penalty. 10 minutes, 20 seconds in the first period. And it puts your Wildcats on a Hogan transportation power play. So it's going to be Clang going to the box for boarding. Now the Wildcats over the line. Jesse Lowell around Dent. Lowell looking for a pass. Oh, Jesse Lowell and Dent are going absolutely at each other right now. We'll see what that looks like later in this game. Matthew Hole over. They try to feed it through the middle, unable to get there. Clogged up the lane by GCU. Wildcats keep possession. Cusinelli shot from the point. And it looks like we're going to have another penalty here on GCU. I don't know if they're frustrated after that shootout loss last night or what exactly has gotten into them here in the first period, but the Wildcats are going to have a minute and 14 of five on three with 8.54 left in this first period. And it's going to be Dent going to the box. He got tangled up with Lowell. I think he went for a little retaliatory penalty, and I think the refs are going to call it a lot closer tonight. We didn't see many penalties last night. I think the refs are going to call this one a little bit closer based off what I'm seeing. So your Wildcats are gonna have a five on three here. Now this is a huge opportunity. Selman in on the face off, can't get the win. Malafronte in with support with Selman. Dent. Two minutes for interference. Time of that penalty, 11 minutes, six seconds in the first period. And I put your Wildcats on the Matthew two Hull man with advantage. a big shot from the point. Just cannot get it past Kasabowski. He did not have a look at that at all. Wildcats, Cusinelli holds over to hole, looking for that shooting lane. Selman takes the shot, he doesn't get there. And we're gonna have 40 seconds left on this five on three. Churro's gonna play this back up real quick. Wildcats looking to turn this back into offense. Cusinelli over the line. Cusinelli holds over to Timor. Timor back to Cusinelli. Cusinelli can't get that pass back to Timor, but Timor is able to control it. Timor skates in, takes a shot. Kasabowski fights it off. Rebound out in front. Selman couldn't get to it. Selman there gets battled off the puck. And it's going to have to be a reset. And there's only 10 seconds left on this five on three. But we're going to have another 53 seconds with a power play time with 7.44 left in the first period. Fisher over the line. Tries to get it to Meyer. Meyer with the puck now on the right wing boards. Nylon with a good play on him to make sure he doesn't get in clean. 
Now it's Johansson trying to chase it around. Ty Schaefer for GCU gets there first. Wildcats get it back to the point. 27 seconds left. Timor now with the puck. Shy now Fisher down low. Wildcats looking for a shooting lane. Gets a good shot on Kasabowski, but there's going to be no rebound off that one. Right into the chest, and he holds. Now the Wildcats in their series against Utah last week, their power play looked so dangerous with the cross seam passes coming from Timor and Cusinelli. Looks like GCU is doing a better job of clogging up the middle, getting their sticks in lanes, and not letting the Wildcats have too much time. Even on that five on three, we saw good pressure from the GCU penalty killers. Ben Jones now for the Wildcats, tries to get it over to Fisher. Fisher gets it down, now Timor. And that's exactly that cross-ice pass I was just talking about. They're looking for that cross-ice one-timer, but the sticks are just in the lanes. There's no room. Timor is going to carry this one off sides. That's going to kill off the penalty on Dent. So that's going to be Klang and Dent out of the box, two of their top defensemen. And during that five on three and then ensuing five on four power play, the Wildcats just cannot get anything past Kasabowski. 6.54 left in the first period. The Wildcats, I think they got handed a golden opportunity here in the first period with that five on three to really show that their offensive mindset changed from yesterday. Not able to take advantage yet, but there's still a lot of time left to prove that that speech from Chad Berman after that game last night was not in vain. And that's a big hit looking like it's from number 12, Matthew Marquis, who scored the lone goal last night. They're gonna dump it in. Kasabowski comes out to play it. GCU with the puck. Now it's Moore trying to skate in. Moore gets there. Moore into the middle for Billings. And Billings is able to roof that one. So GCU, after killing off a five on three and then a five on four, come back down the ice, number 88, Moore, gets in hard on the four check on Ben Jones, gets the puck over to Billings, and Billings goes over the top of Anthony Churro to open the scoring in this game. So you don't convert on the power play. They, you know, GCU gets a big boost from that. They say, all right, we had Clang and Dent in the box. Wildcats unable to score. And they come right back the other way and capitalize. So one nothing GCU with 6.27 left in this first period. And if the Wildcats want to avoid a hellacious, you know, intermission in the locker room from Chad Berman, we're going to need to see something different here. Let's bring in the PA for Lake the call Billings here. Give the assist to number 88, Nate Moore, and number 33, Jacob Cummings. That's Billings from Moore and Cummings. Time of the Lope goal, 13 minutes, 33 seconds in the first period. Now Larson in a battle with Timor. Timor skates it around the back of the net, tries to get it out. Wildcats with some speed over the red line. Now it's Lowell. Back to Selman. Selman, shoot! He scores! And Brody Selman says, all right, let's get it back to level. Let's start this game over again. 547 left in the first. Brody Selman, Cameron Timor, and Jesse Lowell making it happen. Those are three players that the Wildcats need to start getting some points. They can play as well as they want, but they need points. And they convert there for a great, great bounce back goal for Arizona. And Selman with an absolute snipe on that far side. Beats Kasabowski over the shoulder. Great shot there, great confidence. Shoot first mentality, don't overpass it, don't get too cute. And the Wildcats draw even with, well, now it's tied 1-1. 5.47 left in the first period. We'll give it to number 20, Brody Selman. And here we got Malafronte coming in, shot. The assist goes oh, to and they just can't get the rebound. Jesse Lowell, that's Selman from Lowell. Time of your Wildcats. 13 minutes, 13 seconds, in the first period. And the Wildcats looking for more right away. Not Nate Moore on GCU, but they're looking for more goals. Orfanos there with a good power move to the middle, gets a shot on. Great response here from the Wildcats. They don't get demoralized. I was down on them a little bit after not scoring on that five on three, but they certainly weren't down on themselves. They fight back, and they tie this game up five on five. So we're gonna have Litwin here to take the face off. Litwin wins the face off back. Shively with it. Shively holding over to Fisher. Fisher shot, 
doesn't get there. Kasabowski tries to fight that off over the net. Unless he's about 12 feet tall, I don't think he's getting that one, but GCU will bring it back in. Lewis tries to get it through, can't do it, stays on side. And Litwin just not able to swipe that puck away from Colby Donovan for GCU. Churro now on a little bit of an adventure. Churro can't get a handle. GCU still with it, shot, deflects off a stick over the net. GCU buzzing on this shift, but it's gonna be Malfronte. Dodges a big hit there from Colby Donovan. He was looking to, you know, I'm not gonna say take his head off, but certainly make sure the boards are in good shape with the type of hit he was throwing there. We'll have Matthew Hole back in the U of A zone. Pressure coming, gets it around the far boards. Ty Schaefer pinches in, punches it back in for GCU. U of A behind their own net. Now it's Josephson, not able to get a handle. Rudick gets it from him, but it's gonna be Johansson gets control of the puck. Trying to go for a pass, and you've got Josephson coming in with good speed around the back of the net, kind of fakes the pickup, doesn't take it, tries to get the trailing man to come in, and it's Johansson who picks it up. Wildcat shot back on Kasabowski, and he's gonna hold for a face off in the GCU zone with 4.05 left in the first. Your score, all tied up here at one. The goal coming from Brody Selman, five on five. The goal for GCU coming from Blake Billings. So two players who are very important to these respective clubs stepping up and getting a goal here in the first. And it's been a good follow-up shifts here. Josephson in on the out in front. Oh, I think Cusinelli just real he just couldn't quite get a stick on it. And Cusinelli is gonna I think he was frustrated he got taken down. He goes right back at the GCU player. Bit of an uncharacteristic play there from Cusinelli. And now the Wildcats are gonna be going on the PK with 3.48 left in the first. So we'll get a chance to see what the GCU power play looks like here. And with 3.48 left, it's now the Wildcats turn to kill this off. And the message from Chad Berman to Cusinelli has gotta be, look, I get it, you're frustrated. You're not playing as well as you know you can, but those types of penalties are not are not the type of penalties a coach ever wants to see, especially from the captain who is such a great leader on this team. But now it's time for the Wildcats to kill it off, reset. Cusinelli, two minutes for cross-checking. Time of that penalty, 16 minutes, 12 seconds in the first period. Cummings now with it, goes back to the point, back to Cummings. Cummings holds, Billings, one touch over to Cummings. Shot from the point, hits Churro on the pads. And it's gonna be Billings picking up his second goal of the game. Churro not able to control the rebound, comes right out to Billings, and he buries it past Anthony Churro. So in a couple minutes here, some huge momentum swings, and GCU is going back into the lead, up 2-1 with 3.19 left in the first period. So we might see a bit of a higher scoring affair tonight than yesterday. We're, we're already obviously seeing a much higher scoring affair. This was the final tally after 60 minutes plus overtime and a shootout. So now it's gonna be Chad Berman bringing out Selman to take the face off with Vance on his wing. GCU with the face off, try to get it up. Now it's Jesse Lowell over the line. Lowell unable to get it through two GCU defenders. Looking for a spring there, not able to get it. Selman over to Vance. Vance gets it in. Brody Selman got Jesse Lowell in the middle. Selman skates in. High shot on Kasabowski, unable to get it past him. We're gonna have a stoppage here as Kasabowski's blocker came off. Kasabowski, I mean, it's hard for any piece of equipment to stay on when he's moving like that. And now we've got GCU coming in on the Wildcats in a tussle. Everybody's gonna get involved here on the boards. No love lost between these two teams right now. And everyone kind of tumbling down to the ice. The refs are gonna try to get a handle on this and we'll see what, what the calls and the penalties are gonna be. Dent is still just, I mean, he's grabbing onto the ref at this point. Wildcats and GCU. Still going back and forth, and we'll have to see what gets called after this exchange here. I didn't hear a whistle. I don't know if we're gonna see. Ooh, we've got one penalty box door open for the Wildcats. 
Got a GCU player, number nine, Mezik, in the box. See who gets pulled off here. It's going to be Jesse Lowell, number 18, for the Wildcats heading into the box. Mezik, number nine, 254 left in the first period. GCU up two to one on the Wildcats. So, not sure what sparked that confrontation along the boards, but you know, there are about 10 skaters in there all grappling onto each other, squaring off, tumbling down to the ice. And this is gonna be a Saturday night game here at the Tucson Arena that's gonna have a lot of fieriness to it. And it's up to the refs at this point to get control of things. I mean, there, you know, there were five players for each team involved in that exchange. They pulled two. It's good to have matching minors. We'll have four on four hockey here with, for two minutes with 254 left in the first. Litwin cannot win the faceoff. GCU controls. Mezik, two minutes for roughing. Wildcat penalty at number 18. Jesse Lowell, two minutes for roughing. Both penalties at 17 minutes, six seconds in the first period. So with four on four hockey here, it's gonna be Nylon bringing it in, goes back to the point. Clang, can't get a stick on that. They try to break Litwin, he's unable to get there. Clang now, bowl back over the line. Orfanos defends him, but GCU holds onto the puck. Nylon tries to get a shot through, can't get there. Wildcats will look to turn this up the ice. Orfanos tries to get it over to Fisher, can't connect. Orfanos gets in on Kasabowski. Kasabowski plays it to his defenseman. That was Nylon, actually. Nylon will give that to his playing partner. They'll get a line change. Now behind the GCU net. Very nonchalant play here from GCU. They're going to kill time as much as they want. They're up 2-1. They're not going to feel any need to break things out if Wildcats aren't going to force them to. But Malafronte there with a good hit on Petretto along the boards. Wildcats now. Matthew Hole over the line. Hole. Skates around, goes to the middle, can't get it in on Kasabowski. And it's gonna be numbers here for GCU, but a great back check there from Matthew Hole. And it's gonna be Vance coming in, shot on Kasabowski. Vance fights off a check. Great effort there from Vance to try to generate something. Now Matthew Hole tries to get it around the net. Kasabowski can't glove it down. GCU behind their own net. Wildcats are gonna go for a change. GCU is gonna look to break it out. Schaefer dumps it in. Hedgecoke. Wildcats looking to poke one pass. Can't get it there. Rudick, the shot on Churro. Churro is going to glove that and hold that one. So with 57 seconds left here in the first, it's 2-1. GCU up with two goals from Blake Billings. The lone goal from for Arizona coming from Brody Selman. We'll see what line is going to come out here to finish the period for the Wildcats. We got three seconds left of four on four, and then I'll be back to five on five with Jesse Lowell primed and ready to hop out of the box here. Face off, Billings wins it forward, goes behind the net. Marshall on him, now Hedgecoke, Hedgecoke on Billings. Timor comes in for support. Billings able to hold on on the boards. Billings gets it pried out from Timor. Timor tries to get the pass. GCU offside, so they have to tag up. Hedgecoke behind the net, 38 seconds left. Now Jesse Lowell skates down the right wing boards. Lowell with Marshall cutting setter. Lowell, high shot, doesn't get through. Lowell tries to punch it back into the middle. Kasabowski didn't have to get a body on either one of those, but neither of them is gonna count as a shot on net. There's a battle on the boards between two number 10s, Billings and Marshall. Big hit there from Cameron Timor. Now Marshall into the zone, can't get the shot through Hernandez. Marshall, GCU escapes the four check, five seconds left. GCU will skate this one down the boards and in. Goes for a final shot, goes right off the legs of Hedgecoke. So we had a very tale of two periods there for both teams. GCU kills off a five on three, then a five on four. Arizona comes back, ties the game, one one, five on five. But GCU, Billings able to pot his second one of the evening on the power play for the Antelopes. 
So GCU's penalty kill and power play are rolling at 100% right now, and those are numbers that it's going to be a hard team to beat if your power play and uh, penalty kill are adding up to 200%. A lot of 40 minutes of hockey left to play here. We will be back with you after the first intermission. My name is Sebastian Janik. Stay with us for more Wildcat Hockey. Hi, I'm Sebastian Janik here with Dawson Marshall, a member of that 10, 11, 12 line that we've been talking about like crazy on the broadcast. Hey, that line, you guys have been really effective so far. What do you think chemistry wise you guys as a line bring together and who do you really mesh with well on that line? Uh, it's really both them, Willie and Marquis. You know, we go into every game hungry. You know, we like to say muck, which is a hockey term. We go in the corners, we just throw our body around and try to win a battle and just bring it to the net and do the best we can at that. I think that really just that around the same page, page there, uh, much of all together. So. And you know, every great NHL team has that, you know, kind of energy line, that fourth grinding line. Do you guys kind of take pride in being that, you know, that line that's hard to play against? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think every team needs it. And, you know, uh, when the team's down a little bit, I think we can show some energy and uh, bring the puck to the net when the boys need us. And in that last game against Utah, you had an absolutely massive hit. What does it feel like for you as a player when you get to deliver one of those ones that you line up just right? You no, know, it felt good. It gets the blood pumping a little bit, and it gets the boys going on the bench. It feels good to hear a little roar from the bench. So, you know, those are always good ones to have for sure. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dawson. Because of Eller, I've had once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. I've learned to step outside of my comfort zone. Eller has given me a platform to bridge my technical skills into managerial skills. Because of Eller, I've grown my professional network. Because of Eller, I am more passionate about my goals. I've met amazing people. Because of Eller, I have endless opportunities. I am more involved in my community. I've been able to enhance my public speaking, which led me to get my internship this summer. ...from type 1 diabetes. He started skating at the age of 7. He was a stick boy of the Arizona Hockey Ice Cats at the time from 1998 to 99 and the 99 through 2000 seasons. He was recruited to play AAA club hockey in Phoenix and traveled to Phoenix three days a week for practice after school. He was selected two years in a row to participate in the Hockey Night in Boston Prep Showcase and he was line mate with Sid the Kid Crosby for one year. Michael's under-16 club team participated in the 2014 National Championships in Tampa, Florida, taking third place overall nationally. Mike has assisted with his family as goal judge, penalty box, and the clock here at the Wildcat Games. The Wildcat family offers their sincere condolences to the Kryzik family on the loss of Michael.
appreciation night for a Saturday night game. Let's welcome your Wildcats back onto the ice where they are going to need a better second period. They were able to tie up the game 1-1, one, one, five on five, but they weren't able to convert on some key power plays. They give up a goal on the penalty kill, and this is gonna be a test for this team. After the game last night, like I said before, head coach Chad Berman kept this team around for a long discussion. And I got a feeling that if this game doesn't change quickly, they're gonna be stuck here all night with him locked in that locker room. So let's see what the second period holds here. It's gotten a little chippy. There's been physicality. There's been a couple roughing penalties, a couple scrums that have resulted in some four on four. We'll see what the refs are feeling in terms of gauging the temperature of this game, what they feel they need to call, what they feel they don't. And this is gonna be a big bounce back period for the Wildcats if they're able to get going and show that they can come into the second period down. Saturday, last week, they came into the second period down two nothing, scored two goals in 24 seconds, tied the game up, kept pressing, got a third, held on to that third, and got a fourth to finish up the game, winning at 4-2 last Saturday against Utah. But this is a different team. GCU's better defensively. They've done a really good job of shutting down any high chance scoring opportunities so far. But let's get ready for the second period puck drop here. Brody Selman still out there with Marshall and Lowell on that top line. We got Ben Jones going back to pick out the puck. His partner, Matthew Hole through the center ice. Selman with speed, dumps it in near corner. Marshall in on the four check, dumps it back to Selman. Selman tries to go for the wraparound and can't get it there. Good defensive play by Klang. And Selman, not the biggest guy, but he's gonna get in there on more on the four check. Marshall is gonna come in and support. Klang and Marshall now with battling with Selman. Lowell with the puck, tries to get a shot through. Ramps up off a stick. Lowell took a hit a little bit up high there, got spun around, but he pops right back up. Jesse Lowell's a tough customer, definitely not gonna deter him from getting into the nasty parts of the ice where those types of plays happen. We get line changes here for both teams. Some parting discussion words from both lines as they head back to the bench. And this is college hockey, folks. The, you know, these guys have a bit of a temper and as long as it doesn't come through on the side of penalties, you like to see that chippiness and that fire. And now it's Jones back on the point, dumps it down, Litwin with the puck, tries to get out in front, unable to connect with Orfanos. Now GCU holds in their own end, goes for the breakout pass, comes right in on Churro, so no icing. Churro opts not to hold it. Now Ben Jones, Big hit there on the four check from GCU. Back to the point, gets it across. Petretto in his skates, but gets the puck back. Tries to get it on net. Another chance, third chance. Churro shuts them all down. Now the Wildcats with some speed. Back up the other. Orfanos down the wing. Tries to do a little dangle. Can't hold on to the puck. Oh, Orfanos is definitely going to get called for that one there. And this is going to be another kind of just retaliatory penalty. That's gonna put the Wildcats back on the penalty kill. Orfanos there, got the GCU player up high. He's gonna head to the box, and I think that's gonna be a signal to both teams. If you wanna play on the line, there's gonna be more, there might be some more penalties called this period. So Orfanos to the box at 18.54 left in the second period, so the Wildcats will be going back onto the penalty kill. Weren't able to kill off the first one, but we'll see if they can adapt. Get a bit of a better penalty kill here. I'm just checking out the replay now. I'm gonna play behind. We're a couple minutes behind on the stream in front of me, so can't exactly see what happened with Orfanos, but GCU player went down in a heap, holding his face. Orfanos heads off to the box. Looks like we're gonna have Another Wildcat skating into the box. Anthony Cusinelli heading into the box. But we've got four Wildcat skaters out there, so it's a, it's a five on four power play with two Wildcats in the box. Not, might be a two and 10 here on Orfanos. Well, he'll, get, he'll hear the call. George Orfanos, two minutes for roughing and a 10 minute misconduct. Serving. The two minute roughing penalty is number 15, Anthony Cusinelli. Time of that penalty, one minute, 15 seconds in the second period. 
So there's the clarification. Now Billings for GCU. Billings up at the point. Billings, who has the two goals so far for GCU tonight, gets that puck in. Churro able to fight it off. GCU back to the point. Petretto over to Billings. Billings down low, one-timer. Churro fights it off with the pads. That's Cummings down there on those on the boards. Now Cummings skates middle, tries to hit his teammate with a lot of open space, but just not able to convert. Looking for the play out in front, backdoor tip, can't get there. GCU still with control. Petretto skates into the middle, over to Cummings. Cummings back to Petretto, over to Billings. Billings makes a move on Fisher, able to get around behind the net. Shively tries to take his base, can't get there. GCU still with possession here. Goes to the middle, looking for an open man. Billings on that far side, in support, or that near side, in support. That's number 17, Donovan, out there on this power play unit as well. Over to Cummings. A sliding Max Meyer tries to take his space away, and Churro has to raw Billings. I think that one might have been headed wide, but that one was labeled, and Churro was able to get good leather on it, hold that one. 17-16 left in the second period. GCU up two to one. And the Wildcats are gonna have to kill off 32 more seconds of power play time here. So we're gonna have Larson on the point forward, their top scoring forward on the point with Dent. Mezik trying to get in there. Timor beats him to it and gets the puck down the ice. 25 seconds left on the power play with Cusinelli serving the two minutes. Morfanos with a 10 minute game misconduct. Now GCU, Dent drops it back through neutral ice over the Arizona blue line. GCU goes around the net looking for a bang play out in front. Timor and his defensive partner say no, but Larson pinches, holds it in. Dent now shot from the point. Churro fights it off. Still with possession is GCU behind the net. And the power play is over. We're back to five on five, but GCU still with possession here. Larson now with the puck back to Dent. Dent holds it in at the blue line, gets it in deep. Selman now for the Wildcats, tries to get in there. Mezik beats him to it. Mezik gets planted into the boards. Dent keeps it back in, right back to Mezik. Mezik gets hammered into the boards again. Selman around Larson. So Selman with a good burst of speed, but he gets cut off there by Tomlin from GCU. Now Hedgecoke over to Timor. Timor back to Hedgecoke. Cusinelli cannot get a stick on that. He'll go for a line change. Now, GCU unable to get that out. Vance in with it. Can't dangle through a second time, almost did. Schaefer gets knocked off the puck for GCU. This comes back, but it's gonna be nylon for GCU with a lot of speed up the right wing boards. Gets past Ben Jones, two on three. And the Wildcats will come right back up the ice with numbers. Oh, and Duke Litwin toe picks. He has such great speed and the ability to generate a two on one there and he just toe picks and goes down and the play does not develop. Ben Jones there takes a big hit and they go back at each other. That's Ben Jones. And that was the exact same penalty they called on Anthony Cusinelli was a retaliatory cross check. Not sure exactly what the refs are, you know, how they're gonna call this, I'm, okay. Let's not try to figure out what refs do. We all know that that's a futile task. Let's keep playing on with hockey. And that was number 25, Corey Miskovich. Miskovich, it's a tough one. Getting tossed up with Ben Jones there and Miskovich and Ben Jones go back and forth, back and forth. Miskovich gets him with a cross check to, you know, finish up the exchange. You're gonna have both of these teams, they do not like each other at the moment. With every minute that goes by in every play, they seem to dislike each other just a little bit more. But the Wildcats need to make sure. We saw what Cusinelli's penalty cost them in the first period. 1447 left in the second. And you really would like to see the refs call it the same, but like, you never know from their eyes. But it's up to the Wildcats to respond here. This season isn't over anytime soon and they need to get you know, their identity, their culture, all the things that define this hockey club working just a little bit better. That's gonna be Johansson, bangs it down the boards. That's gonna go down for icing again. So 
Wildcats will be back in their own zone for the faceoff. Moore, Cummings, and Billings, the forward line for GCU. Malafronte, Johansson, and Josephson for the Wildcats, or Vance, actually, I believe. Johansson in for the faceoff against Billings. Tie up. Wildcats come out with the puck, try to hammer it around the boards. Wildcats try to pop it out of the zone, just can't quite get there. Still in the Wildcat zone. GCU knocks it in behind the net. Ben Jones chasing after it. Cummings gets in on him. Billings in support, knocks it around the other side. Vance trying to get there first, can't do it. Petretto rifles it through the slot. Shot there from the point. Ooh, Churro did not have a good look at that one. Reacted a little bit late, but Puck misses the net. Off the boards and no shot. Vance now carries it up. And the Wildcats are just going to have to dump in and go for a line change there. So fresh legs on for the Wildcats. They'll try to get on the four check. Great job there to knock that one down, but they just can't turn it into anything quite yet. Still a chance. Max Meyer just can't get there. Marquis was the one who gloved that down. Good hit there from Fritz. Fritz now with the puck on the far boards. Goes back to the point. Shively with his stick ready for a shot. Doesn't get to him. This one misses the net, goes around. Moore is able to get it up. Moore now for GCU. Battling with Fritz. Max Meyer chops it to the boards. GCU cycles it down. Moore now out to the point. Cummings behind the net. Cummings battling with Fritz. Support there from Fisher. Marquis will get the puck now. Marquis will look to spring an, a, an attack. Bit too hard of a pass. Jumps off the stick of Meyer. GCU right back at them. GCU in their own end. Tries to go up through the middle. Doesn't connect with anybody. No icing though. Player got a stick on it. Now Timor behind the net fighting off a check. Timor able to do that. But Hedgecoat can't handle it. Pressure there in his own zone. Now Selman looking for a quick pass. Selman, self pass. Down the right wing boards. Going to Marshall. And he can't get it there. Selman crashes hard into the boards and almost takes a friendly fire puck from Timor. Now it's going to be Lowell. Tries to go down deep. Selman first in. Selman back out to the slot. No one there except GCU. And the Wildcats have been able to get some two-on-ones, develop some fast breaks, but just not able to convert on these two-on-ones. Hernandez for GCU takes a big hit there from Jesse Lowell. Now it's Marshall with the puck. Dent for GCU throws the shoulder into Marshall. Wildcats now, a little bit of Keystone Cops there as two Wildcats go into each other. And it's going to be offsides as Donovan cannot get in communication with his teammate and they come over offsides. So the faceoff will come outside the U of A zone. And, you know, it's hard being up here without the ability to bounce stuff off of someone else, but not sure what to say right now except for the Wildcats are still battling. They're not giving up many good chances, but they really just need to start converting. You can get all the chances you want, but there's got to be some finish at some point from this Wildcats team that has the skill. It's just not happening for them right now. So face off outside the Arizona zone. Johansson in on the face off against Nylon. Johansson wins it back, or Litwin, my apologies. Litwin number 26. Trying to get in on the four check, put some pressure on. GCU able to get it out over the blue line. Donovan takes a big hit there from Ben Jones. 17 on 17. Donovan pops up with a B under his bonnet. We'll see if he goes to return the favor here. So Donovan picks up the puck again. Donovan back to the point. Schaefer takes a shot. Headhunter gets knocked down. Shot out in front and Churro with a lightning quick save. And we'll get some pushing and shoving back in front of the Arizona net once again. The refs will come in, give the GCU player a hug, give him a point. And it looks like it's going to be a, a penalty here on GCU as he heads off to the box. Colby Donovan took a big hit from Ben Jones. You could tell from his body language right away that Donovan was looking to return the favor. Churro gloves the puck, some extracurriculars. And Donovan's going to head to the box. And the Wildcats, I believe, are going to go on the power play here. 
So with 11.14 left in the second period, GCU leading the Wildcats two to one with goals, both goals from Billings for GCU and the goal from Selman for the Wildcats. And yeah, the Wildcats here are gonna have two minutes of power play time to try to get this game all squared up. And you gotta think that bench in this arena is ready to burst if they're able to get that. Donovan took a, you know, we've seen a couple selfish penalties out of frustration. Donovan takes one there. Now, okay, Wildcats win the, win the face off. Back to hole, hole over to Timor. Back to hole, hole with a high shot. Kasabowski fights it off. Malafronte can't get on the rebound. Puck stays in the zone. Now it's hole. Cusinelli back to hole. Hole shot. Kasabowski looked behind him on that one. I don't think he knew he got it until it dropped down in front of him. You'd like to see that shot though from hole. Obviously, you know, getting shots pinpoint exactly where you want them is it's no easy task, but you'd like to see a shot off the pads. Force Kasabowski to, you know, get defend those second, third, fourth chances. It can be really tough for a goalie in a scramble, especially when your defense might not clear out the front of the net as well. Wildcats here to take the face off. Lowell bodies his man down to the ice. Wildcats keep it in the zone. Over to Cusinelli. Cusinelli back to hole. Cusinelli, Timor looking for that shot. Doesn't materialize. Cusinelli cycles back to the point. Over to hole. Great one time chance there for Matthew Hole, and he just fans on the puck, but Wildcats hold it in. Now Cusinelli on the near boards. Cusinelli over to Timor, a little bit too quick, hops off his stick. Hole able to control. Cusinelli shot there. Oh, Kasabowski almost bats that in as it comes off the backboards. And there's going to be, that's halfway gone in this power play for the Wildcats. Some good cycling, good chances. Would like to see a little bit more of a shot first mentality, I think, though. There's a lot of passes around the outside that GCU is going to let them take all day if they're going to only threaten from that far out from inside the net. But Meyer here, down low, working hard. Meyer, little head fake, back to the point, over to the far side, to the point. Shot, blocked from GCU, right back to the Wildcat player. Sh puck out in front. Kasabowski can't get a hold on it, but the Wildcats can't knock it in either. 25 seconds left on the power play. GCU dumps it in on Churro. Churro holds the puck, sets it up for his defenseman. Four check pressure coming there from Moore. Wildcats looking for a breakout. Trying to find an open lane. Doesn't see much, decides to take the open ice. Skates down the far boards. Can't hold on to it. And this one's gonna come out of the zone with 9.15 left. And the penalty will expire to Donovan. And Donovan's gonna get right on the four check. Wildcats not able to convert on a big power play. Good passing, looked good a couple of the plays, but just unable to settle the puck down, get the shots they wanted. Now it's GCU right back in, drops it back. Good steal there. That's Litwin coming down the left wing boards, gets it to the middle, shot blocked by GCU. And Vance got caved in from behind after that play. Wildcats hold it in the zone, try to get it in deep, can't do it. GCU back up the ice. Lewis now holds the puck for GCU through neutral ice, dumps it in. GCU goes for a line change, but Lewis will go right in on the four check. Hits Hedge Cook there, a little bit of punishment for his troubles. Pass is behind, or uh, that was, I believe, as Vance there, pass behind him. Now Timor with nylon all over him. Timor, good composure to break that puck out. Selman, three on two, and the puck just goes off the skate. Can't control it there for Marshall. Marshall tries to get to Selman. Selman out in front, can't get it past Kasabowski. Lowell now tries to hold, du jumps it down, but it just goes straight to GCU. GCU now, nylon in, and a great play there from Hedgecoak. Takes the puck, takes the body. Neutralizes any chance, but Cummings now for GCU. Skating in, shot on Churro. Churro fights off with a stick. Cummings wraps around the net. And I think Churro got that one as well. It's hard to see from up here, but Dent now down to Cummings. Cummings with a big shot. Doesn't get through. Wildcats trying to get the puck out, trying to open the pressure valve. Billings, Cummings, Dent at the point. Dent holds it in with a second effort here. Cummings over to Billings. Billings now with the puck. Looking like some tired legs here for the Wildcats. 
Timor now in a battle with Cummings. They bring it out in front. Brody Selman stops that chance. But GCU looking like they're on the power play here. Another shot on Churro. Can't get the hold on that one. They try to just dump it to the boards and get it out, but they just can't right now. Timor with it. Tries to get it up. Dent pinches, holds the line, keeps it in. Billings now behind the U of A net. 6.50 left in the first period. GC up, GCU up 2-1. to one. Dent just can't control a rolling puck. Comes out. They'll have to tag up and get back on side. But I think the Wildcats here are going to be looking for a line change. There they go. It was a long shift for those guys. GCU now. Billings in the middle. Good shot block there from Jesse Lowell. Duke Litwin takes the puck away but goes right to a GCU player. Now it's Schaefer down the boards. Wraps it around. Hedgecoke neutralizes his man. Jesse Lowell tries to get it out. Body in the way. Can't do so. Now GCU controls in front of their own bench. Litwin can't pick that one off. Schaefer for GCU. Takes a bump there. Timor tries to get it up. A little bit of speed here for Litwin. As he tries to get to Malafronte. Now Litwin back to Malafronte. Malafronte shot. Fought off by Kasabowski. Good shot attempt there from Malafronte. They try to throw it back at Kasabowski, but that comes to the boards. GC will control. They'll outlet up the middle. Pace over the blue line. Dump one in on Churro. And he holds that one. A little tumble over Churro's stick there, but no harm, no foul. 540 left in the second period. GCU still leading two to one with all the scoring coming in the first period. Wildcats currently 0 for three on the power play. Same story as last night. But we'll see if they can change the story here or if we're gonna end up with a very similar score to yesterday. Wildcats win the zone. Johansson wins the faceoff in the zone. Now it's Cusinelli. Matthew Hole around the net. And GCU is just giving them no time and space right now in either zone. Wildcats look to be under siege here a little bit lately. Big hit there on Cusinelli. Kept it in by Petretto. Down behind the net. Banging away at it. Goes wide. Wildcats looking to break it out. Cusinelli. Dumped it over the blue line. Kasabowski tries to come out to play it. Can't do it. Loose puck. Kasabowski can't handle it. And the Wildcats just can't get there. And we're going to have a penalty here on GCU. And it's looking like the cross checks are going to be called pretty tightly here. And it's going to be, who do we have going? It's going to be Rudick, number 18. Number 16 for GCU. So that's Rudick. GCU heading to the box. Wildcats going back on the power play. They only had three power plays total last game. This is their fourth power play coming up here. What, it's, what has not worked so far has been the overpassing. You really want to see a different type of mentality here on this power play. Don't get in that umbrella. Try to work something down low and get a greasy goal here. We'll bring in the PA for the call as soon as we get it. But yeah, Number 16, Justin Ruddike. Two minutes for cross-checking. Time of that penalty, 14 minutes, 57 seconds in the second period. That puts your Wildcats on the Hogan Transportation power play. And a good shot there from Brody Selman from the side of the net. Kasabowski fights it off. This one pops out to center, but Max Meyer, quick on his horse, gets to the puck, tags up. Wildcats regroup, looking for an opening. Skates into the zone, dumps it in. This comes in on Kasabowski, and he's just going to cover for a face-off. So we'll see what the Wildcats can get going here. 126 left in the 128 left in the power play, 430 left in the period. So we're gonna have Lowell in here to take the face off in the GCU zone. Timor down there on the far side, Malafronte near side, Cusinelli on the point. Hole come in to take the face off against Nylon, dueling 18s. Ref having a little discussion. Now we'll get the puck drop. Nylon wins it. GCU tries to hammer it out, gets past two U of A players, and Churro will be the third player to pick it up. Moore, number 88, skating around the zone, testing the Wildcats. Wildcats here. Timor 
over to the far s or the near side. Jesse Lowell back to Timor. They look to set up the unit here. Timor back to the point. Hole over to Timor. Timor back to Hole. Hole with a shot. And another high shot that misses the net. Kasabowski not being tested on that one. Good shot, good low shot there looking for a tip. Can't get there. This one gets past Cusinelli on the near side. But Matthew Hole does a good job. Nylon on him. Hole behind. And the Wildcats here looking to get it over. Cusinelli behind the net. Timor comes in against Klang. Timor back to the point. Timor looking for a pass. Malfronte in the middle, can't get a shot on net. Too much stick work there from GCU. Now Timor holds Malfronte, quick shot, tries to get for the deflection. Kasabowski has it covered. U of A keep poking at it until the whistle is blown. But another save there from Kasabowski with 11 seconds left on this power play. So, with 11 seconds left on this power play, this is the fourth power play for the Wildcats tonight. They're gonna look to set up something, try to get this unit with a little bit of pressure with 11 seconds left before Rudick heads out of the box. Johansson wins the faceoff at the point, over to Shively. Shively holds, waits, comes in, tries to, and they score! Joe Hansen with a great feed from Shively and they make GCU pay on the power play. And we are all squared up here at two in the second period. It's a brand new game, folks. Great effort there from Shively. Doesn't take the easy route, looks off his defender, drags it around him. Little pass over to Johansson, and Johansson with a quick, looking like a little bit like Bergeron there. A little sweepy wrister, beats Kasabowski, and we're tied at 2-2 with 3.03 left in the second period. What a great response there. Little time left on that power play. It might have actually ended up being a five-on-five -five goal when we get the call, but a great effort there from Shively to make something happen. 28, Alex Johansson. The assist goes to number six, Ryan Fisher, and number 11, Will Josephson. That's Johansson from Fisher and Josephson on the power play. Time of your Wildcat goal, 16 minutes, 57 seconds in the second period. My apologies. I thought that was Shively who made that happen. Apparently it was Fisher. They both wear five and six, and they've got jerseys tucked at the moment. So it's a little bit hard to tell between five and six when the jerseys are tucked. I might have to have a little talk and ask him to do me a favor up here. But Kasabowski places behind his net. And now the Wildcats have got to have a jump in their step here. We've seen some great follow-up shifts from them. This one's going to head down for icing. And we've seen their ability to feed off of the energy of the crowd, feed off the energy of the bench after some big goals, keep the pressure on. And it's going to come back into the GCU zone on an icing. So 2.03 left in the second, 2-2 two -two game. Two's across the board right now. And for the Wildcats, you've got two minutes and three seconds to let GCU know they might not come into this third period with a lead. They came into the second period with a lead. They're not gonna leave with one. This is a big fight back game for Arizona that takes a lot of pride. You know, back-to-back -back Western Collegiate Hockey League, ho hockey champ. They were conference champions back to back. They won a couple Cactus Cups too. They've been a great team and they really need to play up to their expectations. Oh, and I'm not sure, you know, Schaefer doesn't like Selman giving him a, giving him a, you know, an ice bath there for Kasabowski. If they don't send someone to the box here, I got a feeling that this game is gonna get very ugly very quick because that was just an absolutely Brutal cross check. I understand that you're protecting your goalie, but it looks like they're not gonna send anyone off here. The refs are gonna say we're gonna let that play. Alright, if that's gonna if that's the standard you want to set, let's see how they call the rest of this game. You don't want to see refs dictate a game on the ice. 
and change the outcome, but I can't understand how Selman gets absolutely buried there, and there's nothing going on. The ref's hands stay down. So we'll see how they decide to call the rest of this game. Face off in the GCU zone, Litwin wins the puck back. And if I'm Selman, I'll say, all right, you want to cross check me, I'm going to score again. He's got one goal tonight. I want to see a, you know, a shift from Selman where he says, you did not hurt me. You can do stupid stuff like that and I'm going to make you pay. Billings there with a shot. U of A in their own zone, can't get it out. Malafronte staples his man into the boards. Litwin here looking for a breakout, can't get through. Orfanos is streaking up the middle, but he just can't get the pass to him. Orfanos, who did take that 10 minute game misconduct, back on the ice. Big physical player, a lot of competitiveness in him. 117 left in the second period. And I don't know if this is going to come down to the refs to have a talk with the players, the coaches to have a talk with the players, but those after the whistle cross checks, that doesn't add anything to this game. You're not stopping a goal, you're just taking out your frustration. And you can't let people do that. You know, players, you know, because you don't want to see someone go down with an injury on a play that just doesn't need to happen. But Selman's all good, everyone, no one's been injured so far, so we'll keep on playing. GCU into the zone. Big hit there from Cummings on the boards on Johansson. Johansson and Cummings will shoulder each other a little bit. One minute left in the period. Ben Jones not able to get his man off the puck. GCU tries to feed it out in front. U of A now trying to control things down, get out of this period, you know. You got 44 seconds left in the period. Tomlin now, or that was Moore with the puck. C Cummings going for another shot on net. Doesn't get there, hole from his knees. Moore around to Clang, Clang down to Cummings. Now the Wildcats will get possession and a chance to break out. Ben Jones skates up to the red line, dumps it in on Kasabowski. Josephson gets in there, forces him to cover. So with 20 seconds left, we'll have a face off in the GCU zone. And if I were you guys watching this stream, I would keep an eye out for what happens away from the puck just as much as what's happening with the puck right now. There's a little bit, a little bit happening at all parts of the ice, at all parts of the period. So Wildcats here, Selman in to take the face off in the GCU zone, 20 seconds left. Linesman sees something he doesn't like. Make sure players are in the right positions. Goes to drop the puck. Selman can't win that one. Schaefer bangs it around the boards. GCU can't get it out though. Lowell, quick on the four check, puts the pressure on. Don't give him a second to think. Back to the point. Seven seconds left, shot! Oh, and he had a wide open net. Goes straight through his legs. And he's gonna give the, Jesse Lowell is gonna give the good old stick stretch motion going, knowing that he could have had one there. Just doesn't bounce the right way for him. So we're gonna be going into the third period with a 2-2 tied game. Nylon for GCU is uh, having a spirited conversation with the refs. Multiple GCU players are. They do not seem to be happy with how this game is being ref so far. I don't think any team's gonna be too happy with some of the calls because there's been some non-calls, some other calls. No one ever likes the refs, let's just agree with that. So we are gonna be heading into this third period, all tied up at 2-2. The tying goal coming from Johansson from Fisher currently is the call. And we will be back with you in a little bit for the third period. Because of Eller, I've had once in a lifetime opportunities. I've learned to step outside of my comfort zone. Eller has given me a platform to bridge my technical skills into managerial skills. Because of Eller, I've grown my professional network. Because of Eller, I am more passionate about my goals. I've met amazing people. Because of Eller, I have endless opportunities. I am more involved in my community. I've been able to enhance my public speaking, which led me to get my internship this summer. I've started taking more initiative in my life. Because of Eller, I have a home here at the U of A. I'm Javier. I'm Vikas. I'm Sariska. I'm Natalie. I'm Mitzel. I'm Daniel. I'm Javier. I am Paola. I'm Brent. I'm Katya. I'm Jason. I'm Sean. 
I am Vedashree. I'm Jennifer. I am Eller.
into the Tucson Arena as we head into this third period, all tied up between the GCU Antelopes and the University of Arizona Wildcats. Anthony Churro will lead the team out of the tunnel coming into this big third period. Got a good crowd here tonight. A lot of the Tucson community coming out to show their support for this team. Always like to see it. We've got a big building here in Tucson, but here come the Wildcats. And here at the Tucson Arena on Military Appreciation Night, we're gonna see if the Wildcats can make something happen here in the third period and play the same style they have been, maybe with just a little bit more offensive jump in their step. So the Wildcats out on the ice first, getting their stretch in. GCU likes to take their time coming out of the tunnel, but Got everyone on the ice now. The Zamboni door is shut. And soon we will have puck drop for the third period. There were a lot of conversations between players, coaches, and the refs. Let everyone speak in a piece of their mind. And we'll see what happens in this third period in terms of penalties. If both teams know they need to be disciplined, you want to stay five on five and give yourself a chance to win this game. Coming in tied 2-2. Both teams have scored on the power play. Or it might have been just after the power play expired for the Wildcats. But goals for the Wildcats coming from Selman and Johansson. Both goals coming from Billings for GCU. And we're going to have the Wildcats top line starting this period with Brody Selman at center, Jesse Lowell, and Dawson Marshall on the wings. Let's get ready for puck drop in the third period. 20 minutes of hockey left to play, all squared up. Let's get to it, folks. GCU knocks this into the Wildcat zone. Hole back to defend there against Billings. Billings, who's obviously both scored both goals, been a huge factor in this game. Billings out here with Cummings and Moore. GCU dumps this one in. Billings looking for a tip, can't get it. Now the Wildcats will look to break it out. Jesse Lowell gets it over to Selman. Selman with a good burst of speed. Dent there does a good job knocking the puck off of Selman's stick, but Wildcats maybe still have another chance to keep the control of the puck here. Selman tries to come in for support. Can't get a puck, can't get a stick on it. Cummings and GCU will break this out. It's gonna be Ty Schaefer feeding it over. Schaefer back in looking for the backdoor pass. Oh, and Churro got run there by Cummings. Cummings is coming in for that backdoor play, tied up with a U of A defenseman, or that was Jesse Lowell. And Churro takes another wipeout. He's a tough guy, though. Sturdy guy, bounces right back up, checks the mask. Looks like Brody Selman, number 20, is laboring there a little bit, getting off the ice. That was a big crash into the net, but good job there by Arizona to take away the space. And this net on this side of the ice, the last two nights, has not been treated too kindly. They've come off the it's come off the moorings quite a bit. Refs have had a little bit of trouble keeping it on. We almost got the ice crew out last time. But it's all set now. So this will be a face-off in the Wildcat zone. Billings in to take the face-off. Wins it back. Petretto can't handle it. Orfanos tries to get it across. Broken up there by GCU, back into the Wildcat zone. One minute gone in the third period. Wildcats still looking for their first real offensive zone time. Donovan gets in there with Lewis. Donovan hard on the forecheck. Finishes his man. GCU now, Lewis trying to center, can't get there. Churro fights it off. Orfanos now behind the net, battling against Donovan. Orfanos tries to get out. Klang holds it at the blue line, but can't get a hold on it. And the Wildcats almost had a two on one, but this is not gonna go for an icing, so the Wildcats still have a chance here to make something of it. Josephson around the back of the net, can't get the wraparound. And Orfanos wasn't able to get that, a stick on that and get it up over Kasabowski. Wildcats though with a good rush chance there, making something happen with their speed. Now it's Josephson around the net. Hedgecoke gets it over. Now Josephson on the far boards, can't get a handle on that long pass, Petretto gets it over. Now the Wildcats pressuring. It's Johansson, the tying goal scorer. Gets it back to his defenseman. Now it's Timor. Cusinelli chips this one in deep. They try to go to work on the four check. Nowhere to go with it, but the Wildcats get it back. Cusinelli in a puck battle, can't get it. 
Now Rudick along the board, sidesteps a big hit. Wildcats looking to move it up. Big hit there. That was on Hedgecoke. He was a sturdy guy, but he gets right back up. Now it's Vance, tries to get it across. Can't get it there, kicks it past Rudick. Johansson looks to get it deep. They look for a line change here. Vance gets his stick back. Rudick redirects it into the Wildcats zone. Matthew Hole now up the wing to Vance. Vance tries to go for a shot, goes wide. Now it's Fritz. Vance tied up with the linesman. Couldn't get the puck around him. TCU tries to get it out. Matthew Hole holds it in, but it gets past him. Now the Wildcats will regroup up the center. Can't connect with Meyer. And this is going to go down for an icing. 16.56 left in the third period. Game all tied up, 2-2. Two to two. The Wildcats in a fierce battle here on the second night of a two-night homestand. They won yesterday's game in a shootout, 2-1. to one, But they played 59 minutes of great hockey. One minute of bad hockey, goes to overtime, can't finish it. They win in the shootout, but points-wise in the standings, they need regulation wins right now. They don't want to let this one go to overtime again. And the Wildcats definitely need a bit of fight back here. Tomlin tries to get a shot, doesn't get much on it. Fritz now, number 24, bangs it off the boards over the GCU defenseman. Oh, Vance almost had a little break there, but just goes down in a little collision with Dent. Now up through the middle, Mezik. Can't get through there. Matthew Hole dodges a big hit there. Vance tries to get it out. Dent holds it in, looks for the one-timer, decides to hold up, skates to the center. A little wrist shot, but a little floater like that through some bodies can cause some problems. Now it's Larson in the corner. He gets planted. Larson still working. Max Meyer looks to take the puck down the boards, dumps it in, line change for Arizona. GCU behind their own net. Selman on the four check. And Selman's out there with, oh, that was almost a going the other way, but Lowell back in. Gets it back to the defenseman. Fisher, big carom off the boards. No one knew where that one went. This comes out. GCU looking for a one-man rush. Almost gets through, almost gets it on Churro. The wraparound can't hold the stick on his, uh, can't hold the puck on his stick. Rolls off, goes wide. Almost a dangerous chance there. Churro was not able to get back quick enough if he had that wraparound. The Wildcats here. Clang over into the middle for Billings. Billings with the puck. Billings skates to the outside. Billings still with the puck. Going for a tour of the offensive zone. Billings holds. Eventually Marshall puts on enough pressure, but Cummings is in in support. Selman. Now Cummings behind the Arizona net. Cummings looking for a shot, goes high. This will come out of the zone. The Wildcats will get the change they need. Long change in this period for GCU. Now, good hit along the boards there from Orfanos. But the GCU gets in first and Hedgecook, Hedgecook absolutely plants Nylon. But GCU ends up with a great opportunity and Churro has to come up huge on that save. Sometimes you get stuck watching the hit, stop watching the puck, and that one came in on Churro quick. Nylon there with a little pick. Doesn't work out though. Wildcats, Timor at the point. Timor with some space. Goes down the near boards, back to the point. Shot, tip, Josephson can't get it through, still loose. Now it's Litwin looking to get it. Well, Kasabowski didn't recover, but Kasabowski's basking in his net. GCU tries to break it out, but they end up knocking it back towards their own zone. Wildcats, good steal there from Josephson. Josephson looking to make something happen. Can't get the stick handle. Out in front, and the GCU players get to it first. Clear it down the ice, and this will be an icing. This is going to come back into the GCU zone for an offensive zone faceoff for the Wildcats. And now the Wildcats pleading their case a little bit too. I don't think either team is going to leave with a lot of love for these referees. So we've got Johansson in on the faceoff. Cusinelli on the right wing here in his one-timer position. Johansson still waiting for the puck to be dropped here. If there's any way for a ref to lose favor with everybody in the crowd, 
hand on the ice is to do that because I guarantee you most people who don't watch a lot of hockey have no idea what he's doing, but a good shot here from the point. Cusinelli now with it. Cusinelli looking for a little bit of room, gets it down to Vance. Vance get, tries to get it out in front for Johansson, just can't get it there. Cusinelli comes in, Vance still with it, gets it back to Hole. Hole gets the defender to go down, and a shot right into Kasabowski. And after that play, a GCU player goes high on Johansson. Ref's arm stay down. As we say, you know, if you've got a standard, stick to it. So there's been a lot of plays here that I think in a officiating teaching program, they might tell you to do things a little different. Wildcats win the faceoff, quick shit on Kasabowski, that comes up over the net. And that'll be another faceoff in the GCU zone for Arizona. Johansson in to take the face off. Cusinelli and Vance switch sides. Johansson, good support there from his wingers. Cusinelli with a quick shot. Kasabowski fights it off. Wrap around attempt, and it just doesn't go for Johansson. Kasabowski, I don't know how he got there. He's still looking for the puck right now. And that was a good jam play from the Wildcats to make sure they try to get something in there. Kasabowski continues to uh, tumble around the blue paint as players get in there. But that wraparound chance for Johansson looked like it was almost a sure thing. Kasabowski holds the post somehow and it just won't go. So we'll get the net reset here on the moorings. Another face off. 13.20 left in the third period. Game is all tied up two to two. Over the last couple minutes, the Wildcats have done a good job generating some offensive pressure, keeping the puck in the GCU zone, threatening chances, and we'll see if they can continue that. As Coach Berman will send out a couple new skaters. See if we can get a face-off win here and set something up. The Wildcats, you know, looking for those jam plays around the net. It's a good place to look for a goal in that blue paint. Well, not in the blue paint because then it's getting called back, but around the blue paint. I'll say that. Those uh, those dirty areas of the ice that take a lot of physical pushing and shoving to get into in the first place. Now Fritz in on the faceoff. Linesmen are going to have a little position correction again for the two skaters. And you've got to think here, these teams might get a little frustrated by the end of it. Wildcats with the puck behind the net, trying to get something out in front, can't get there. High, played with a high stick, so GCU will have to touch it first. Now GCU does. Wildcats able to keep them in. Fritz goes down the boards, looking for a back play. Now it's over! Oh, and a Diving glove save from Kasabowski. He was way off his line, way out of position, and has to dive to make that glove save. All righty. Well, we are going to have another penalty here on GCU. Wildcats are going to get a power play attempt. We'll see what the call is here. It's fixing a little technical issue there. So I didn't get to see what the call was. But it's going to be with 12.53 left in the third period, another power play for the Wildcats. I'll bring in the PA for the call here. Uh, number 89, Callum Tomlin. Two minutes for tripping. Time of that penalty, seven minutes, two seconds in the third period. Now Timor working, hole back to the point. Down to Timor, can't handle the pass, tries to feather it around the back of the net. Lowell, support from Meyer, back to Lowell. Jesse Lowell looking to bring this out to the middle. Gets there, just can't get the second try on it. Hole with a good keep in at the point. Down to Timor, over to the middle, big shot. Kasabowski can't hold, handle it. Timor tries to get in there, puck is still loose. Kasabowski's a mile away from his net, he doesn't have his stick. Timor now, hole, shot, Timor. And I think Kasabowski got over on that one, too. Oh, it doesn't have to be pretty, but my God, Kasabowski laying out 
to make sure nothing gets through him. Some incredible chances there on the first 45 seconds of this power play. I think every single U of A fan has hands over heads now wondering how does that not end up in? Kasowski, the puck is loose. He's four feet out of his net with no stick flailing to get back in, somehow does, and we still are tied up here. So we'll have another offensive zone face off for the Wildcats. They're able to win it almost, but not gonna work out. So the Wildcats will have to regroup, get back in the offensive zone, through over the red line, through neutral ice. They get it down low. Johansson getting in there quick on the forecheck. Orfanos follows up. Good job there on the forecheck to make sure they can't get a quick out. On the far boards. Shively back down to Orfano. Shively over to Fart Fisher. Fisher over to Selman. Selman holds, waits, looks. Almost a good quick shot. Rebound out. Vance can't get a tuck. Selman, though, with a shot with purpose. Wildcats are trying to keep this in the offensive zone. Battle along the boards. Vance in a battle, keeps going, does not give up. They keep the puck, goes down low, out in front, into Kasabowski, he'll hold. A little bit of extra after the whistle, which is nothing to be surprised about based on how this game has gone. And we've got 24 seconds left on the power play, 11-17 left in the third in a tie game. And the Wildcats have had some chances that if you put in slow motion, it's gonna be real hard to figure out how none of those made it into the back of the net. But Kasabowski throwing out the Dominic Hasek moves, sliding all over the place. I'm not gonna say it's the most technically beautiful performance I've ever seen, but he has managed to find a way to stop some of these pucks through sheer desperation. And this one will get rung out by GCU. 15 seconds left on the power play. Wildcats looking to get back into the zone. Shot. Doesn't get through the GCU defender. Selman now with it. Couldn't bring it out in front. Billings has it. Billings tries to hold the puck on the boards in a battle with Johansson. Johansson pries it free. Johansson two on one, can't get it. Wildcats there knowing they got a guy coming out of the box. They get back defensively. But a play here, a rush for the GCU Antelopes. Throws one in on Churro. And this is the first time we've seen GCU in the zone very much. And we got only 10.35 left in this third period. But now it's Billings with the puck. Tries to get over to Klang, doesn't connect. Good recovery there. Oh, but it turns it right over to Billings in the slot. Billings wraps it around. Not much on that, but it gets back to the point. Another shot, Churro fights it off. Rebound, stays out somehow. That puck dribbles right through the blue paint. Churro doesn't have his stick. We'll see what the Wildcats can calm things down here. Shot on Churro, holds the puck, doesn't need the stick. All we need is his glove hand. We'll have another stoppage here. And I'd say for the first, you know, almost 10 minutes of this third period, the Wildcats face off in the offensive zone after offensive zone face off. But this is what, you know, this is what hockey is all about. GCU hemmed in for a long time. They come back into the Wildcat zone, get a little bit of space. Bit, crash the net, and Churro has to make some huge saves here. We'll have Mezik in on the face-off against Fritz. Fritz, Mezik, neither one really won it. A bit of a tie. This one will end up heading back into the GCU zone. Held there. Larson couldn't hold that pass. Goes back to the Wildcats at center ice. Matthew Hole in his own zone. Passes over to his partner, Jones. Tipped into the zone by Fritz with that will hit the glass near the bench, out of play, and we will get a face off just outside the GCU zone. We're gonna see who can be the hero tonight for the Wildcats. They went down, you know, one nothing, were able to tie it up, went down two one, able to tie it up again. And up and down that bench, Chad Bourbon's gonna be looking for that player that can show, you know, I can step up in these moments. I can be that clutch goal scorer. Bailey Marshall was known as that clutch goal scorer during his tenure here. And they're still looking maybe for that guy to kind of take up the mantle and be that clutch goal scorer that when you need one, they find a way to get one. Anyone who remembers that last game against ASU before the stoppage because of COVID remembers what Bailey Marshall can do. Now here in the offensive zone, Jones does a good job, gets it out, holds. 
Now it's Hole looking for some open ice. Takes the space. Hole skating in. Drops it back. Oh, great shot there by Fritz. Just won't go. Marshall throws one on net. That goes wide. Fritz back to Timor. Knows he doesn't have a partner at the point, so goes back down the boards. Try to keep cycling down the boards, but the GCU players pinch that off. Fritz now over to Timor. Up through to Marshall. He tips it into the zone. He'll go in on a one-man mission with the changes going on. Marshall looks to the point. Finds Timor. Timor goes for a shot, and it goes off the stick of Duinic. Duinic, number 13. He's got a, a name that a little bit of a mouthful, but Duinic gets a stick on that, gets the puck out of the out of the play. we get another face-off here. And this is where face-offs, having a good offensive face-off, man. Jesse Lowell's going to get in here and try to win this. They blow that one dead. Got a linesman with his hand up. For the first time in a while, they haven't put their hands up much this game, but they'll redo this one. 8.47 left in the third period. Lowell can't win that one. Clang for GC. Uh, it's Dent. My apologies. Dent looks for a floater up the middle. Goes right to the Wildcats. Timor now passes it over. Marshall dumps it in. Kasabosic picks it up. Lowell can't cut that one off, but Timor does. Oh, and Timor scores! What a great wrist shot from Cameron Timor, and what a huge goal for this Wildcats team. This line Marshall put up there to play on that first line. He's going to give a fist pump. He's, pu he's you got to think he feels great being rewarded for that, but what a shot from Timor. Elevates on Kasabosic. Doesn't get a good look on it. Flutters over the shoulder. That was not a flutter. That was a great wrist shot from Timor. But he sees an open lane. He sees some space, and he takes it. What a great goal from Cameron Timor. And he has been a hero for this Wildcats team. He's got a lot of points on the season. He's been an incredibly consistent player. And you just love to see that from Timor to get that big goal here. Cat goal. Give it to number nine, Cameron Timor. That's Timor, unassisted, time of your Wildcat goal. 11 minutes, 34 seconds in the third period. And with 8.02 left in the third, we will now see what will unfold. Cameron Timor is going to be credited that goal unassisted, but the effort from Selman, Lowell, and Marshall helps create that goal and make it a possibility. And Timor, with his great offensive acumen, takes full advantage of the chance he gets. And this is now a 3-2 lead for the Wildcats. Draw one here by GCU. Try to get the puck up the middle. Clang, the defenseman, skates in. Right in the middle, nylon, shot block. Great shot block there by George Orfano. Sometimes you got to do everything, sacrifice the body, get in the lane. He does a great job there. That was a dangerous chance from a talented goal scorer, nylon, on GCU. Now Orfano strips the puck from him. Good workman shift from him here. He did have the shootout winner last night against GCU, but that was a good just workhorse effort. Get in the lane, break up a play, and the clock will tick down. And Orfanos is just not letting them break out. He'll say, all right, I'll take you all on. GCU trying to get it out, unable to with the pressure from the Wildcats. Back to the point. They try to get it in deep again. They do. Back out into the slot. Still up for grabs. And it's just Johansson can't get a handle on it, but he does now. Back to the point. Fisher, shot, blocked in front. A lot of traffic there in front of Kasabowski. You want to take his eyes away. He's been good from what he can see. But if he can't see it, he can't stop it. Now Fisher across. Over to Josephson. Tries to throw a little one on net. Almost gets there. Now it's back through the slot. Back. Fisher, shot. Good block there from GCU. Good job from Fisher to recover, though. Not let them get the breakaway. And we're going to have a face-off here at center ice. Great recovery there from Fisher. Almost looked like the GCU player was going to have a clean break. But he does not let him do so. <laughs> so GCU wins the face-off. 
in their own zone. Billings catches it, he picks an edge. Goes down, able to recover though. GCU now over the line with a lot of speed. Wildcats trying to shut it down. Schaefer, the defenseman, coming down low. Looking to the middle, no one known except Fritz. Now we got a three on two developing up ice. Fritz tries to go to Meyer, the pass is just behind him. Wildcats will have to reset on that opportunity. Billings over the blue line, dumps it in deep. Billings with playing with Cummings and Moore here. Schaefer on the back end. Wildcats try to dump it in. Marquis can't get a hold of it. Grand Canyon dumps it in. And it's going to be icing here. So we'll bring you back into the action here with the Wildcats in another offensive zone. If you're following us on YouTube, we're trying to figure out um, the chat situation. Sorry for that. Anyone watching on YouTube, just uh, put the chat away for a little bit. So GCU here, off the boards, Timor gloves it down. The, the, uh, the goal scorer for the Wildcats who got them the lead. Now Cummings on the near boards, takes a big hit there from Lowell. Can't get it through. Now, looks like the puck hopped up into the bench. And we will get a face off outside the GCU zone. 520 left in the third period. The U of A up three to two on an unassisted goal from Cameron Timor. Great shot from the point. Timor continues to rack up points so far in this season where he has been by far one of the best players for this U of A team. Now, Win the, the Wildcats win the face off. Over the red line, they dump the puck in. Jesse Lowell with a big hit on Klang there. Jesse Lowell still hunting his man. Klang trying to get it out. Lowell fishes it out from the pile. Lowell going to work with Nylon. No, nope, no penalty call here. Lowell is still down on the ice, but they're gonna have to keep playing. They don't. You, you can't wait for the refs. Now it's gonna be Mezik down the left wing boards looking for the centering pass. Almost got there, but a good defensive play from Ben Jones to tie up the GCU forward. And we've seen that happen before. You can see it all the time. Everyone thinks there should be a call. Everyone stops skating. Puck goes the other way. Until you hear that whistle, do not assume anything at this point. And we're gonna get a emphatic chant from the crowd here to let them know how they feel about that exchange. It was Jesse Lowell who went down after being wrapped up, but hopefully he's doing good. Well, he's in there to take the face off, so obviously he's doing just fine, but Billings here on the boards in a battle with Jones. Jones caves in his man. Wildcats will go back up the ice, hole over to Selman. Selman tries to get it in deep, can't get it past Dent. Dent, and we're gonna have a whistle here. And I'm not really sure, uh, Sometimes you do wonder what's on the mind of some of these players. I'm gonna stop speculating and you can decide for yourself. Dent gives a little shoulder fake to a guy. Well, these are hockey players after all. They, uh, they've been playing a feisty game since they were quite young and personality factors into getting to this level of hockey. Well, the Wildcats here with 423 left. Play responsible, play smart. Do not take any penalties, especially in the last two minutes like we've seen on previous nights here in this building. Let's, a little bit of wrap up there between Hernandez and Josephson, but they both know better than to keep it going. And there was a U of A football game earlier this afternoon. It looks like maybe some of the fans who uh, had a good time there have come out to the TCC to continue to support another Wildcat Athletics program. And at the University of Arizona, a lot of passionate fans and hockey is a game of passion, so what do you expect? Wildcats win the faceoff. Puck goes all the way around the boards. Litwin trying to get on the faceoff, the forecheck on Schaefer. Schaefer pressured again by Litwin. Now Moore on the far boards, sends it middle, gloved down by Billings. Billings with a good bit of speed, comes down the far boards, tries to find a trailer, and he only finds Litwin. Litwin kind of catches an edge and goes down. 
Not able to recover, but this will come back into the GCU zone. 345 left in this game. GCU trying to go for the outlet home run pass. That gets waved off on icing. Churro with his hand up, thought it was. Rep said no. Wildcats regroup in their own zone. Orfanos up the right wing boards. Orfanos cruises into the zone, tries to stop up, drops it in deep. Marquis can't get that one. Orfanos back with it. Orfanos loses the puck. And it's gonna be Nylon coming in with a big burst of speed. Good job there to angle off the forward. Not sure, Nylon is down on the ice. I think they're gonna have to blow this one dead. He's down with his head face straight onto the ice. Not sure what happened there. Nylon was looking okay. A Wildcat player came in. Looks like they're gonna call for the medical trainers right away. And this has been a great two game back and forth series, but you hate to see a player go down with an injury. Nylon's been a really solid player for them. He's generated a lot of offense, been an energy player, tries to get in there on the four check, but he's down in a lot of pain. We will cut the audio for a minute until we kind of see what developments are going on. Stay with us, we'll be back as soon as we know more and as soon as we get play started once again. Stay tuned on the Wildcat YouTube hockey stream for the last 3.05 of this third period. So bringing you back in, thought Nylon maybe was a little bit more banged up and was gonna have to be taken off, but luckily he makes a skate over to the bench. He's in a lot of discomfort, but it's good to see him not go down the tunnel here. Never wanna see an injury. And this game has had a lot of good battle, a lot of good competitiveness, very back and forth game. So. Glad to see we don't have to end the last three minutes on a sour note there. So Nylon back on the bench. But GCU with the puck, Clang gets it in deep. Shively now with the puck behind the U of A net. Three minutes remaining in the period. Wildcats up three to two. Selman tries to dump this in. Not gonna be able to beat out the icing and this will come back into the U of A zone. And for GCU, you know, Nylon who, Nylon, I do apologize if I have a not been pronouncing that correctly, but the Eilon, you know, he seems to be a really good character player for this GCU team. That bench is gonna look at what happened to him and think, all right, let's get one for him, but it's up for the Wildcats to make sure they hold strong in this last 252 and come out of here with the result they were hoping for. And they have battled to get it. And it looks like this is gonna be coming down for another icing. Marshall with a little close skate on the GCU player. Well, we've seen a lot of that tonight, so no surprise there. Face off will come comes back into the Wildcat zone. See what line the GCU decides to go with. Tomlin's out there. Got I'm not sure who's in there to take the face off for GCU. Oh, my apologies, excuse me, but we've got Marshall now coming down the left wing boards. Dumps it in deep, tries to get in there on the four check. Marshall gets in there. Takes his man off the puck, but it's gonna be Larson who comes up with it, tries to feed middle. This puck gets redirected into the zone, no icing. They try to get it out in front, no go. Now they get it out, but this one is hammered back behind the net. Wildcats trying to calm things down. Tomlin in a battle on the boards. Now Larson holds back to the point, fakes the slap shot, looks for a lane, throws it on Churro, rebound out in front. Good, clear there, but the not out. Clang holds it in and Klang gets buried by Lowell. But this play is still in the offensive zone. They look to get it out in front. Churro's gonna smother that one. Klang and Lowell have been going, oh, Lowell will just basically go at anybody. Lowell's gonna have a little conversation with Tomlin here. Lowell's not looking to make friends, he's looking to win hockey games. So, no love lost between these guys. In these last minute 55, these two teams may hate each other, but once that time clock runs out, 
they both know that they're competitors, they're all athletes, and they, uh, they have a mutual respect for one another. But for the last minute 55, that respect is gonna go out the window, and Arizona will try to hold on to this three to two lead or push for another one. We'll see what coach Chad Berman has drawn up here, what he has to say to his players so they understand exactly what's being expected of them. It actually looks like Nylon's gonna take the skate now to the Zamboni doors, decides he's just not able to keep going. He's able to do so on his own power though. He's walking out on his own accord, so hopefully it's nothing serious for him. But with a minute 55 left, that'll be one forward. That's been a big part of this GCU team so far tonight that they will not have for the remainder of this game. And this face-off for the Wildcats is, you know, defensive zone face-off, 155 left, one goal lead against a team that beat you in their own building a little bit back. Wildcats head coach Chad Berman said that they should have felt embarrassed about that loss and needed to use that embarrassment to fire them up and make sure they remember what it feels like to lose to this team and put some of that embarrassment back onto GCU. So we're gonna have a face off here in the Wildcat zone. Still waiting on the puck drop here. All righty, now we get the face off. Dent on the boards. Cummings tries to get it across. Johansson bodies him down. The net is empty for GCU and this one just goes wide. GCU gonna pull the goalie with 144 left. They seem to be okay with the idea of, you know, usually in this situation, you would see a team pull a goalie after they win the face off and they get possession. But interestingly, they decide to pull Kasabowski, who's been a great goalie for them in this two game series. They get the six forward. Now the Wildcats get possession. They don't wanna keep icing it over and over, but you wanna take a chance at that open net if you get there. GCU still with the puck on the boards. Good board battle there from the Wildcats. Good support, three Wildcats in on three lopes. Puck still against the boards. Moore working there. Moore fishes it out. He's looking center all the way, but he's getting no room. Now it's Dent carrying it down the boards. Can't keep a handle on the puck. Support there from the Wildcats, but it comes back to Moore. Moore over to Cummings. Cummings can't get anything clean. Josephson shuts him down quick. Johansson now shuts him down. One minute remaining in the period. And there's a battle in the corner there. Now it comes out. Dent, great shot block there. Still in the offensive zone, still in the zone for the Wildcats. Johansson rims this one around the boards. Meyer pressuring his man. And it looks like Puck went into the bench, came back into play. 45 seconds left in the game. I am going to go head down to the ice level to do the post-game interviews. I will hand you over to Garrett Kane, our producer, who will lead you into this last minute. Never done color before, so this is gonna be an experience. All right, so it looks like the puck just went out of play. It's gonna be back down in the U of A zone. GCU's gonna try to work up to the point and doesn't quite get it there. Goes back down GCU zone. All right, going through the neutral zone. Looks like they can't quite get it into the zone. 
Juve's doing a good job of clogging up the uh, blue line this game. Goes behind the net. All right, number 17's gonna break it out, go up the middle. He's got some speed. Takes a hit. All right, that's gonna be it for the game. 3-2, Uve. We're going to be joined with Sebastian down on the ice for the uh, post-game uh, interview. Let's see which player he picks. And we're going to get an interview with Coach Berman. And Marshall drew into that first line on this game. How did it feel? It was a passionate game with some passionate fans. How are you feeling right now? You know, really good. It uh, feels good to win one. You know, playing a hard game. One goal games are always fun, and uh, just feeling great right now. Let's go. And you know, a back and forth series. These last two home stands. What do you think these games mean building forward for the rest of the season? Getting to play this level of competitive, hard hitting hockey right now. I think it's a milestone for our team. You know, it shows a lot if you can uh, win those games when you're down. We were down two times during that game. Uh, it's going to set the tone for the rest of the season for sure. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dawson. And I'm joined by head coach Chad Berman. After yesterday's game, you kept the team around for a pretty long meeting. How do you think they responded tonight to that? Well, first I'd like to say, uh, thank Senior Master Sergeant Joe Westlake and Lieutenant Colonel Will, Will uh, Gary for coming out. It's, a, it's an honor to have them and come in and talk to our locker room. Um, the team corralled on their own. They had a, a players-only meeting this morning at the morning skate. Um, it's good to see that we're dialing into the things we have to. It has to happen collectively, so that's a good sign. Um, you know, we're not scoring a lot of goals right now, so we have to keep teams at two goals or less. Uh, anyway, anyway, it works out with the wins, good with me. And on the offensive side, Cameron Timor has been great so far this season, points-wise. What does it mean for a guy like him to get that game-winning goal in the third period? He's such a, a, such a good, humble kid. I mean, it's easy to be happy for him when he has success. He's a really smart hockey player, makes a lot of things happen for us. He's really having a bit of a breakout year, so really happy for him and for us, obviously. Awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. All right. Thanks for joining in today, tonight's game. And the final score is going to be 3-2 U of A. And we'll see you next time.